Hello and welcome to episode two of Five Questions With. This is the series where I pose five questions to another running YouTuber and we get to hear some great answers. I first started watching today's guest's videos soon after I began running when I started looking for running content on YouTube. He's been making running videos for many years now and earlier this year he won an award at the Running Awards Show. A few weeks ago I was fortunate enough to run with him during the Run Gatwick Half Marathon. He's a great guy and has a fantastic YouTube channel. It is of course Rich. So let's get straight into 5 questions with Baze187. Thanks very much Chris and thank you for inviting me onto your channel to answer these five questions for your viewers. Let's get into it. I started running in 2009 because my mother had survived breast cancer and I really wanted to do something to give back to breast cancer charities for the research that helped. So I contacted a breast cancer charity, I asked them what could I do to help raise them some money and they suggested that I run the Great North Run. And that's how it started really, I started training in like the May and then in the September I did the Great North Run and I did it in 1 hour 55 and my target at the time was 2 hours so I was really happy with that. And then it wasn't too long after that that I got the running bug and here we are, I'm still running now, 10 years later. My favourite race has to be the London Marathon and it would be in 2012, which was my first ever marathon, my first ever London. And I trained really hard. I managed to finish the race in three hours 43, but the sense of achievement that that gave me and just a feeling of barriers were removed and I felt like anything was possible. And that is a feeling that's really hard to replicate once you've done it that one time. So I'll always remember that feeling. I definitely think that was my favorite race, but I have done some other really good races as well, which is hard to say which is your favorite, which is not out of all of these, but I think the two that stand out is the Great Wall Marathon in China and Comrades in South Africa. I really enjoyed both those races, the difficulty of them and the scenery and just the whole traveling around the world to do races as well. I love all of that. So those two are on a very even par with my first London Marathon. Yeah, I'm going to the Frankfurt Marathon this year. So I applied for the ballot for Berlin. I wasn't successful for 2018. So really still wanted to go and do an international race this year. And I had nothing else lined up. I felt that obviously Europe is a bit more affordable for me being based in the UK. And it was out of a few. I had like Amsterdam, Rotterdam, a couple I was looking at, but Frankfurt was there. And it stood out to me because I saw that they've got a park run in Frankfurt. So straight away I thought, I could make this a weekend of running, maybe do the park run. They actually do a pretzel run, it's called, on the Saturday, organised by the Frankfurt Marathon, where you can do a 5k race in the town and you earn a pretzel-shaped medal and an actual big pretzel to eat. And, so the, and that's a free race as well. So the idea of that really sold it to me. I could make a whole weekend of running. But in terms of my goals for that race, I'm a little bit torn between do I not do the pretzel run and really go for it at the marathon and focus purely on that? Or do I just kind of not worry about my finish time and just go and enjoy the weekend and do lots of running? And I can't really achieve both, so I do need to decide. But knowing me, I'm probably gonna go out there, do the pretzel run and just have a, have a good time and enjoy it. Right, if you're a brand new YouTube channel and you're just starting out, you need to get your YouTube channel set up with a good logo, you need to get a decent name or a brand, whatever you want to call it. You need to be making content about something you're passionate about. You can't just like, I know some people will start a YouTube channel, hope that it's a get rich quick scheme where they can just upload some videos and people will watch them and they'll make money and that. it doesn't work like that. You need to make something you actually enjoy, something that you're passionate about because you're not gonna get thousands of views overnight. If you're passionate about what you're doing, you'll create better videos. People will watch them, and if people share that passion, they'll see it in you, they'll see how passionate you are, and they'll be attracted to what you're doing, and then they'll subscribe, and they'll view your videos, they'll share them, and the channel will grow organically over time. There's no point trying to set up a YouTube channel about something you're not interested in. Where possible, show, don't tell. So what do I mean by that? We'll see all kinds of videos where 
people who just sit, sat in a hotel room with their camera saying, hey, I'm at the uh, Liverpool Half Marathon or I'm at the Berlin Marathon. Oh, it's gonna be great, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm gonna be going this place, I'm gonna be going that place. But they just sat there telling you what they're gonna do. And then it cuts to another clip of them, say after the race. Oh, what a great race that was. I've done this, I've done that. But you haven't actually seen any of what's going on. You just, you've just got them telling you and it's not the most interesting type of content. If you can show them what you're doing, you know, if I could say to you, oh, the start was so busy. Oh, and that horn that started the race was so loud. Well, if you've got a three or four second clip showing how many people are there and hearing the horn and off we go and we all run, you've shown them. Don't, you don't need to tell them. Do not be afraid to talk to your camera in public. This is the hardest thing for a new YouTuber. You feel very uncomfortable. I know I did when I started. I'd, I'd be stood somewhere, I'd get the camera out and I'd start saying, oh, hi guys, welcome to my channel or whatever. And then I'd see somebody. So I'd, I'd bring the camera down and I'd wait and I'd wait for them to go past. I'd look round, make sure there's no one around. Okay, right now I can go again. Okay, guys, yeah, welcome to my channel. Oh no, someone else is coming. And you just end up never making any content because you're too nervous about actually talking. What you'll find is I walk past loads of people talking to my camera and a lot of them don't even bat an eyelid anyway. And all that worry about, oh, what people are thinking. It's, it's your own anxiety and your own worries coming out, but they're probably not that bothered. So just do it, make your content, get it out there. So what can you expect from my channel going forward? Well, it'll be more of what I do regularly. I'll be doing race videos, showing you all the races that I go to, showcasing the routes, trying to give you a feel for what those races are like. I also do my inspirational invitational live stream series where I interview other runners, try and bring you stories of people that have done amazing things or have interesting backgrounds in running or they know something really um, that requires knowledge and experience and qualifications that perhaps I can't deliver. And I try and bring that content to you in that series. And on that, you can interact with the interview. If you tune in live, you can ask questions, you can find out what you want to know and get involved. And I really love doing that. I'd like to see more of you getting involved in those live chats. In terms of races, I've got a fair few races coming up this year. Um, I've got the Leamington Spa Half Marathon. I'm doing the Water of Life Half. I'm doing Frankfurt Marathon. I'm doing the Grand Union Canal Half. So there's plenty coming up. Next year, I've already got lined up my international race, which is going to be the Cyprus Half Marathon in Pathos in March. So if anybody's looking for a European race and you want to come and join me over there, I'd love to see you there. So I hope that was interesting for you to hear my five answers. Let's get back to Chris. Well, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed that. And some great advice there for the many of us that are still quite new to making videos. If you don't already watch Rich's videos, do head over to his channel and check it out. As always, I'll put links below. I do hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, remember, it's absolutely free to hit that like button. And uh, do leave a comment and let me know how you think the series is going so far. I'd love to hear that. Before we end, I thought it would be a good idea if I gave you guys a chance to ask a question to a future guest. So if you'd like to do this, head on over to the Here We Are Running Facebook page and I'll let you know who's coming up in later episodes um, and then you can submit a question. But I only have five questions to ask, so I'll have to select very carefully. But if you'd like to do that, head on over to the um, Here We Are Running Facebook page. So finally, a big thank you to Rich for taking his time and answering my questions. And once again, thank you for watching. And as a reward for staying to the end of this video, I thought it'd be good if I gave you a little sneak preview of next week's episode. Until the next time, guys, goodbye. I did it. I was bricking it at the start. Um, I learned a lot. But on the day, when you're in your pen, you can feel the buzz. I'm a, I'm a jack of many trades online, um, making videos, writing blogs, and now podcasting. I want to try and make films that are, not films in general, but videos that are like cinematic. Um, and I've realised I've been talking too much, so I'm going to shut up now. <laughs>